Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. This is a generic physics video. Um, an undergrad asked me a question. He says, I seem to be just learning uh, formulas and when to use them. And, and um, I got the feeling that he didn't quite understand what physics is really all about and what, what it is that you learn. And in my mind, there's, there's basically three areas of physics. I'm going to divide it up this way. Use different colors to make it pretty. So the first area in physics that you, you can't really do anything else without really understanding this is, is the math. And I know there's, there's this long-running joke about you know mathematicians and physicists and the, the rivalry there is there. And the reason why it exists is if you want to do math correctly, you have to think like a mathematician. You have to have that pure logical view of the universe where you put rules together. Um, you put little atomic bits together to form bigger bits and theorems and all that kind of stuff. And, and if you can't do that, then you're going to have a really hard time in physics. It's just the way it is. And um, the, the trick is to learn as much math as possible um, without becoming a mathematician. <laughs> and I, I don't know a better way to express that. But basically, you want to take uh, all the math courses you possibly can and, and master as many math principles as you possibly can. And that means you're going to skip a lot of theorems. You're going to skip a lot of the, the interesting, important bits that you know physicists don't really consider. There's a whole bunch of solutions to math problems that you know physicists don't really, really care about much because they don't apply to any problem they've seen before. And the second bit that you need to learn is you need to have, and the word they use is qualitative. Okay. And what qualitative means is that's like the knowledge that when you throw a ball in the air, it's going to fall back to the earth. Okay, You can't really put a number to that. You just know this is what happens. And there are countless phenomena in nature that you, you couldn't possibly have been exposed to at the level a physicist understands. And hopefully when you're going through that series with me on, on electrodynamics, you're learning things about how charge actually behaves, what the electric field actually is, what potential really means, and, and all those things as you know, we work through the countless examples they have in the book. And um, you know, one of the interesting things is in quantum mechanics, there's not much qualitative there. Um, it, to, to the undergrad, and when I took the course, um, it really felt like I was lost in the math. But there is a little bit that you can pull out, a little bit of things that do make sense, um, some tricks we apply that help us get a good intuitive grasp of what's really happening. And the last area of physics that you need to master is the formulas and the math put together. That's the quantitative bits. And so that's understanding the formulas and, and how they work and how, how they're derived, really. Um, each one of these by themselves doesn't make a physicist, and if you're missing one of the parts, it's not going to make any sense. Like, let's go through here. Let's say in math that we learn that the integral of the derivative is equal to the function. Okay, that's what we learn in math. Um, in, in the qualitative aspect, we learn that the um, position changes over time linearly with no acceleration. Okay, so you might learn that if if something is sliding across that that table, if it's on ice or if it's like an air table, or you have one of those special air tracks, you know, where there's really very little resistance going on, there's constant momentum. Okay? And the quantitative aspect is that you have these these uh, series of formulas. And then you might have that, um, you know, the acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity and the position is equal to the derivative of the, uh, no, velocity is equal to the derivative of the position, right? And each one of these bits of knowledge by themselves doesn't help you achieve what you need to be as a physicist, okay? You can memorize the formulas. But when it comes time that you have to derive your own formula for a problem that nobody's seen before, you're not going to have the math to support that to derive a new formula based on what you already know. At the same token, you can have this, this mathematical quantitative view of the universe and forget basic things. You know, 
if you hook up that capacitor to a strong battery, it's going to have a large charge on the plates. You know what I mean? That's just something that you have to understand. Um, and oftentimes in, in the labs, um, we had the labs underneath the lecture hall there. In the labs, you get those physicists that forget basic things. Like if you turn the screw too tight, it's going to strip the bolt. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of the qualitative knowledge you need to understand. Um, there's a really good story. Um, it kind of combines all these concepts together into one. And, and this is fourth hand. I, I think I read it once in one of Feynman's books, and I read it again in The Making of the Atomic Bomb. But the basic story is that when they were setting off the atomic bomb, um, one of the physicists wanted to measure how powerful it was, and one of the physicists had a bright idea. So he took little tiny pieces of paper, tore them up, and dropped them as the uh, pressure wave passed by them, you know, miles and miles away. And so he measured the displacement of those, you know, he dropped, he dropped many, not just one, but many of them because he wanted to find the average, you know. So he measured the displacement of the center of those pieces of paper, and he's able to calculate pretty accurately how strong that bomb was, you know. He had a qualitative understanding that the force of energy, the, the energy of that explosion was going to translate to a displacement of air. And he had a qualitative understanding that there was a shell of air, you know, traveling um, away from there and so you had you know a certain relationship between how much displacement it, um, and how much energy in total and then beyond that he had the quantitative understanding of how air behaves and uh, what a displacement or a certain amount of air how much force it takes or energy it takes to displace the air um, all of that of course came because he understood the basic math about how things relate to each other and how to derive one formula from another so that's really what what the heck you're learning in physics um, I I don't know a better way to explain this, but I, you know, if you feel like you're just learning quantitative stuff, you need to step back and and look at the big picture, the qualitative. If if you're getting the results of the formulas, but you forget how you got there, you need to step step back and learn the math again. Um, go back and review. If you need to, go back and review calculus. You need to master calculus in order to progress in physics. Um, maybe take some advanced courses in calculus to see some advanced topics about how differentials work or or multivariable calculus, which, you know, in, in the electrodynamics course we're covering heavily. Anyway, I hope this helps. I uh, hope this gives you some encouragement to, to keep moving forward and, and maybe, you know, take a look at the problems that you're solving in a different light. Thanks for your time. Bye.